What is happening, YouTube? Cowboy here, and it is time for more of the walkthrough. But before we jump into it, we're at the title screen, and of course, in the top left corner, you may notice we are now on app version and regulation version 1.01, .01, meaning that the Xbox One has been updated to the same standards as the PS4 and PC versions. Even though we were limiting our vigor to help compensate for that, now we are on the same as everyone else. So let's jump back in and continue on. And today we're going to be taking on Farron Keep. Now Farron Keep is a uh, fairly difficult area, only because of the layout of it. Um, there are some some rather uh, beefy enemies that you're going to have to deal with in this area, but they're not too bad as long as you just you know stay strong as you go through. And we got a very straightforward guide to. Uh, to help navigate us through this area. Now, one thing I should mention, uh, before you come here, if you have some extra souls lying around, it certainly helps to pick up some poison moss. Uh, we are going into the stereotypical poisonous area of Dark Souls. For those that have played previous games, you know what I'm talking about. There's always one area that's just filled with bullshit and poison, and that is the entrance to Farron Keep. So we have, um, this is going to be the actual path that we're going to follow. As you can see, extinguish three flames and open the door to Wolf's Blood. With that being said, we're going to go to the right first, very briefly. So we're going to swing straight around the corner here, and we're going to get our purple moss clump. And then right over there, you can see another shiny, and that is Iron Flesh. So we're going to go grab that as well. Now, going to the right, uh, it's a little bit trickier. I wouldn't really recommend it. Um, going to the left, there are very nice markers we can follow. As you can see, we're already poisoned, but even then, the poison damage isn't that hard to deal with. Um, one other thing I should mention before we get too deep into this area is that uh, quite a bit of this swamp. It forces fat rolling. Even if you're below 20% on your weight threshold, you'll still fat roll. So just be ready to deal with that. Um, so from here, we are going to take a hard left over to all these guys. Get our ragged mask. The stuff that the slugs are spitting out, um, it'll just poison you. But we're already poisoned, so it's not really a concern. Now, if you're really concerned about poison, of course, you do have your poison moss clumps you just picked up. You can buy more if you want. Honestly, I don't really worry about it. It ticks very slow, but just for the sake of maintaining health, we'll get rid of it. So now that we have the mask, what we're going to do is you see these fires, and we're going to use these fires as markers. So from this fire, we're going to run over to fire two. You can see an item right over there. We're going to go and snatch that real fast. There's our Titanite Shard. And we're going to be taking short, short trips out to grab items. Um, from Fire 2, right here, perhaps one of the most important things, we have an Estus Shard right there. Go grab that. Are we going to avoid the poison in time? No, we're not. And like I said, the poison doesn't do that much health. I'm just uh, removing it, just for the sake of clarity. Um, so from this fire, of course, you can see next fire is right over there. And right here we have a Titanite, is it? Yes, Titanite. Um, Alright, we're going to swing right for more Poison Moss up the Fallen Structure right over there. Do I want to go grab that stuff first? No, we'll go... Um, yeah, we'll go get that first. We'll go get that item first, and then we'll come back. Just so we are maintaining all the drops we see. And at this point, we're just going to kind of start tanking the poison. So I do have a list of all the items in this area. Um, even then, this area is its a bit of a shit show to navigate. Um, actually, I think I had these items later on my list, but we'll grab them both now. So we're going to run up and grab this one. No, purple moss clump. Yeah, okay, never mind. They are on my list right here. Um... Clump reverse over to here. 
this should be our great sword. Oh yeah, this is the flame. This is after. We're supposed to do this after the flame, but we can do it now. Whatever. Um, so we'll grab the great sword. Awesome strength weapon. Grab that one while we're also here. I feel like I'm grabbing this loot, and this, some of these were my markers that I was using to help navigate this area, and now I'm not going to have those markers. And I'm probably going to get lost. But we're going to head on back. Um, so the goal of this area is there's three fires that you have to extinguish. So we're going to head back to the first fire, that collapsed building right there where we got our Estus Shard. We're going to head back over to that. And we're going to also have a fire, or a Titanite at the fire, and then some Prism Stones as well. Could actually grab up all that before we go to the fire. So let's just go do that right now. <clears throat> uh, the stone parma is also coming up shortly. There's our prism stones. We'll take care of this beast. Heal up real fast. We have the titanite. We got the prism stones. And we can see two other items. And those should be our stone parma and pine resin. There's our rotten pine resin. Where was that parma? There's our stone parma. Excellent. Okay. So we went a little off track, but we're still keeping on uh, pretty standard with our guide. So, from here, we're going to run up top, and this is going to be the first flame we extinguish. to extinguish the flames quite simply just walk on up and extinguish As you can see, by extinguishing one flame, one flame has lit by the door entering us into the keep. Behind it. Where is this rotten pine resin? Right here. There we go. Alright, we're looking good. Um, so let's see, from here we'll take this left path out. Right here is where we lit the bonfire. So we're going to go out this way. And this should actually curve around to that stuff that we went and picked up earlier just because I, I saw it and I wanted to get it then. Um, as you can see, there is the elevated platform. So that's where we picked up our um, poison moss as well as our great sword um, and then I believe we grabbed the titanite over here as well already yes we did uh, so looking back over at my list here let's see great sword one fire two fire okay so from here we're gonna continue following the fires one fire kill this guy now these ones are a little bit trickier. They like to jump, as you can see. They think they're giant human pogo stick things. Um, and they also have a grab attack, which can be quite vicious, so do stay cautious of that. I'm going to kill him. Go over to the next fire and grab the loot. And we'll head on up here to extinguish the second flame. Purple moss will certainly help the way we're burning through it, and second flame goes down. I 
second flame is lit. Alright. So from here, hopefully you're doing okay on Estus. I still have three left. Feeling quite good. Um, we're going to cross this bridge. we got three enemies here. If you're feeling a little nervous, chop some fire bombs out. Hopefully you can actually hit them, unlike myself. Listen, lads, I've had enough of the poisoning shit. Alright, he is down. And now we have our bonfire. Not too hard, right? We're, we're making good progress here. Um, so from this bonfire, uh, we actually have an undead bone shard just outside. So we're going to head straight on down. And right over here, you see a shiny. Um, right here is the door that you've been seeing lights go up for. We still have one more fire we have to extinguish to get that open. We're going to do that shortly. First, we're going to go in here. Kill all the slugs. Slugs, snails whatever you want to call them, and get that bone shard. Now from here, there's another bonfire in this area that actually leads to a covenant. So, just taking out these little sluggies. So uh, right here, that led us up to our bonfire. Now if you look at this kind of uh, structure right here that you can see, it's standalone. And if we just run across, got a couple guys at the base. Take them out, and we're going to head on up. Now, there's two reasons I would suggest doing this right now. Um, one, this is an area for one of the Covenants, so it's good to grab it while we're here. And two, getting up here will actually give you an excellent view and help you to understand where the third fire that we have to extinguish is. So looking over here, we'll run over here. You can see there is the second fire. There is the first fire. Over there is the third fire. So... Now we know exactly where it's at. We have a bit of a heading. You know, just to keep that in mind. Back over here, here's our ladder. So we know if we go down, we're just heading in that general direction. So I think that's very helpful to help find your way. Um, let's see. Ashes, crystal lizard. I don't believe I have... Oh, yes. Okay, I do. All right. So we're going to go upstairs. We have a crystal lizard to take out. Alright, got our Twinkling Titanite, and now we'll circle this back around. Actually, before we do that, there is a uh, illusionary wall right here. See the archway? Knock that out, and we'll get some ashes from that. And then we'll roll on down, and we'll get this bonfire. Alright, um, so at this point, feel free to join the Covenant just to get it added into your list. Uh, this Covenant functions very similar to the Forest Defenders Covenant of uh, Dark Souls 1. And it's actually a really fun Covenant, especially if you're a fan of PvP early on. Basically, the way it works is, while you're part of it, anyone who is in these woods, um, just they're considered trespassers, and you will be summoned in to fight that person trying to get through the woods. So kind of a kind of a really a really fun like protect this area type covenant. But at this point we're gonna take the elevator up and we're gonna actually make our way on up to a boss. Man my guy looks good. Alright. So we're gonna head on up. You can see the stray demon out there. We're not going to go for him just yet, though. We're going to go over to the right first. We have a couple things we're going to get. Now, there's uh, quite a few crystal lizards, so just be ready to, to run on after him, knock him out. And if you are playing a miracle build, we are about to pick up lightning spear as well. So your first uh, real powerful offensive miracle is coming right on up shortly. You can see our lizard see all of them actually so let's get them and run come here come here come here where's the 
third one. Did I lose him? Mm, the third one might have gotten away. I don't recall. Maybe that might. Maybe that might be him up there. I'm not entirely sure. So we got lightning spear. We got our dragon crest shield. Uh, just to keep you informed of what we're picking up, as you remember, a little bit earlier, we picked up a um, the shield that had high dark resistance. This is basically exactly the same, except we have the fire resistance now. So now we have our dark and our anti-fire shield. Um, I could have sworn that it has to be the crystals there. Okay, I know. In my notes, I had three crystal lizards jotted down. I'm sitting there like, where is this third little bugger at? Come here. Don't worry about the enemies, they're not too bad. These are actually kind of your like basic bitch hollows that we were fighting at the start of the game. Um, and especially now, they're, you know, zero concern. So, prioritize your lizards, don't let them escape. You can take out the uh, little basic hollows afterwards. So right there, that raised a, an interesting point that I'm not sure um, I've been able to demonstrate. I've mentioned it before, but I had a, a discussion earlier about iframes. And basically, certain actions in Dark Souls will give you iframes, otherwise known as invulnerability frames, such as rolling. There is a sweet spot during your roll where you'll take no damage. Uh, in a similar method, as you saw right there, while I was in the middle of the backstab animation, um, the enemy could not... The guy actually ran through me with his sword, and it did nothing. That's because during the backstab, I do have iframes active. So this guy is just dead. He just sits here. Um, corpse doesn't do anything when you hit it. I'm sure a lot of you were probably concerned. Like, I feel like there's something with that. But no, sadly, there's not. Um, so from here, we're going to head on up. We're going to take down the stray demon. Pick up two embers. And a great axe. As well as uncover the location for a rather uh, spoilery set of armor. Hello, Mr. Demon. What do I have on, anyway? Flynn's, Covetous, Lloyd's, and Chlorinthy. Okay. Actually, I'll probably resharpen that as we get a little bit closer. I have such low FP. Um, now, this is very reminiscent of the Abyss Demon from Dark Souls 1, of course. Personally, I feel like it looks it looks like the Abyss Demon got eaten by a cat and then spit up as a hairball. Um, really not that hard. There's a reason he doesn't even have a boss health bar and he just has his the regular alternate bar. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm basically face tanking hits and it's not even that much of a concern. So just kind of stay under his butt. He does this jump, which is easy enough to roll and avoid. Um, but whack away at him. And he'll go down without much of a fight. And we now have the Slow Stray Demon. So as I mentioned, two embers to pick up as well. And the Great Axe. There's our Great Axe. There's our Ember. And here's our other Ember. Now, uh, this part is a fairly big spoiler. So if you don't want spoilers, turn your attention away for the next 30 seconds. So now that that demon is dead, much, much later into the game, we'll end up finding Havel and fighting him. Uh, when you beat him, you will acquire access to both the dragon tooth and the shield, but not his armor. His armor will actually be right here, by these vines, on a corpse. But it will not appear until after you've defeated him later, and that is in the Dragon Eerie area. Or excuse me, um, Arch Dragon Peak, mixing up my uh, Dark Souls locations. So keep that in mind after you take down Havel, come back here and pick that up. And spoilers are done for those that had their uh, headphones kind of muted. Hopefully that was loud enough that you could hear. <laughs> but anyway, uh, at this point, we're basically 50% through the way of Fair and Keep. Uh, we, of course, have one more fire to extinguish. And then on top of that, uh, quite a few more pieces of loot to grab. Just running through my list, uh, we have some sword, sword grass, excuse me, a sunlight talisman, some uh, titanite, the nameless knight set, followed by more titanite, um, homeward Bone, Large Soul Repair Powder, um, Antiquated Set. We have a Sorcery Scroll we want to pick up. 
the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring, a couple white branches, the Crown of Dusk, um, I'll do, 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 do. a Sage Scroll, so two different scrolls here as well, and our first Poison Gem. So quite a few pieces of loot to go still. Um, regardless of that, at this point we are going to hearth on back, we'll level up, and then with the next episode we'll continue it on from the Keep Ruins Bonfire, which is that one we picked up before coming up the ladder. So thanks for coming on by, I hope you guys are finding the walkthrough helpful and informative, as that uh, kind of was my goal with this. I'd like to think I'm doing a good job, so anyway, we will catch you all on the next episode as we uh, continue on through the second part of Farron and quite possibly take on the Abyss Watchers as well.